Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasnam back with another video of anatomy. I know you guys missed me so much with the whole gross anatomy situation. I have been out of the scene lately, but guess what? I'm back with a bang and this time I'm bringing you this topic called the internal ear, guys. Internal ear is no joke. Why? Because I tried, uh, I was basically making head and neck course. Guys, I sell my courses if you are interested in that. Uh, look at this good description down below but while i was making that course i realized that i learned internally therefore it took me like a whole day to learn it that was a little difficult and that's the moment i was like honey why should everybody go through that difficulty when they have me so here i am um today i'm going to be teaching you it because it is a difficult topic i realize i've done till middle year but i never got to internal ear so why not explain it to you guys so guys back to this box i am in and back to the drawing board which is right here in front of us so first let's talk about what the internal ear basic structure is if i try to tell you guys to orient you a little bit that um going um this is how the ear is structured right if i say i go medially it means i'm going inside the ear if i say i'm going laterally i'm going leaving the ear right so uh if a snake were to no snake is a little too much if a worm were to pop into your ear let's hope that never happens uh, and it tried to go in so the more medial it would go the more deeper it would go right so if i ask you that worm is stuck inside the internal ear if i ask you what lies lateral to that worm at the moment it is the middle ear if you understood this concept you answered it yourself then you definitely understand what i'm trying to say so remember guys uh why was i even telling you this in the first place but the point is that internal ear begins from the lateral side which is this area um is the middle ear let's suppose this is the middle ear and now we're in the uh, internal ear now the internal ear is structured in very like complicated way so i decided to make it a little easy so remember guys it is a game of the huge uh, competition between something as basic as snails and butterflies and if you can just remember that you will understand the structure of internal ear remember one thing snail and butterfly are in competition snail is doing something else butterfly is doing something else what connects the two they both come together there's a wi-fi that needs to connect the two all right so this is the basic structure of inner ear okay so guys listen to me one two three if anyone were to ask you what is the basic structure of internal ear these this is what you're gonna say no you're not gonna say wi-fi butterfly snail you're gonna say it is made up of the bony parts, the cochlea, vestibule, and semicircular canals. So the entire bony structure of the internal ear consists of the cochlea, the vestibule, and the semicircular canal. The semicircular canal and the cochlea, the butterfly and snail are connected via what we call the vestibule. If you can remember that, then you know the basics of internal ear. The issue, right? The internal ear is kind of, kind of, kind of complicated that's why i'm trying my best to make it easy now remember the entire uh, uh, internal ears uh, basic structure is composed of a bony framework and then a tube that runs inside the bony framework is what we just talked about how the bone is you know structured it's like a snail over here and then it's a butterfly over there and then they're connecting it's the vestibule within that bony structure lies another part of the internal ear known as the membranous labyrinth so this already that we've discussed this is the bony labyrinth means the bone is structured which bone temporal bone is structured this way the membranous labyrinth is basically a tube that lies within these structures okay now let me just make it a, a little bit a normal structure three semicircular canal you have the superior then you have the posterior and then you have the lateral all right and these all open over here fine so if we have this is the bony labyrinth let's suppose okay labyrinth means maze something that's confusing so that's what we've done over here that's what's happening over here all these canals will open into the vestibule all right so the vestibule is the main guy so if i say there was a tube inside uh, this is it's like let's suppose you're in a water park and then you're going swimming and then you enter a tube in the slide you go into a slide and like the slide consists of all of this inside a tube you go so this is the tube part like there's a whole tube inside the bony labyrinth this is known as the membranous labyrinth all right so this is one part of the vestibule's membranous labyrinth this is the other part of the vestibule's membranous labyrinth like a bone and then from here again you have the tube going into the semicircular canals and somehow you are stuck in the slide there is no way to get out so i'm so sorry about that but what matters is you'll understand the concept of the slide at least so guys listen very carefully if i ask you what is the bony labyrinth of the cochlea cochlea is the bone uh, you will say it is the cochlear duct. 
Okay, so the membranous labyrinth of the cochlea is the cochlear duct because obviously tube inside the cochlea is what? Cochlear duct. What is the cochlear duct? It is the membranous labyrinth of the cochlea. How easy is that? Why couldn't anyone on YouTube or Google or the books explain it to me like that? Guess what? I am going to break that and I will do that work, okay? To put this video out on YouTube to help all you guys understand. Now, that makes sense? Now, what is the membranous labyrinth within the vestibule? This is called the saccule and the utricle. Make sense? Making sense? You probably first were like utricle, saccule, organ of cortex, what the heck? Now you know. So, what is the membranous labyrinth of the semicircular canals? The answer is semicircular ducts. If it's superior, it's superior semicircular duct. If it's a, a, a lateral, posterior, uh, so the name will go according to that. Okay. So now that you know the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth, that makes sense. Let's talk a little bit about more their anatomical structures, what everything. Now let's talk about the cochlea individually. Cochlea is basically formed of a bone where there is a central pillar of the bone. Around the central pillar of the bone, you have a uh, basically coils of the cochlea cochlea the central pillar is known as the modiolus that's all you need to know about this whole modiolus situation no need to go into the depth of what it looks like what's going on this is enough it's the central pillar of the cochlea and around it the whole tube is formed the bony tube and then within the tube there is the um, a membranous labyrinth all right and now what happens next what happens next this is, this is getting interesting right so um let's talk about the Two fluids that rotate inside the ear now there is one fluid uh, that is going to be inside the bone and then there is one fluid that is going to be within the membranous labyrinth or the tube or the duct cochlear duct utricle saccule and the semicircular canal ducts okay the the water that is accumulating outside part of the membranous labyrinth but inside of the bony labyrinth this is known as what we call the peri lymph whereas the water that accumulates inside the membranous labyrinth in case of cochlea is the cochlear duct in case of vestibule is the utricle saccule and inside the semicircular ducts is known as the endo lymph this concept should be out of the way now you get it. Now we're done with two pillars of this whole understanding. Let's talk about the difference in function. Why are there two, the snail and butterfly, why are they like competing with each other? Simply, snail has one role and a butterfly has another role, completely different, all right? The snail produces mucus so that we slip, whereas the butterfly is, uh, what does the butterfly do? Um, uh, you know what, you guys figure that out. Okay. A butterfly is for us to like be entertained by the beauty of the butterfly, right? Both have different roles. So similarly, cochlea is for hearing purpose. You hear things when the sensory uh, receptors of the cochlea are stimulated. Uh, when the vestibule and the uh, semicircular ducts are uh, uh, like moved, their basic role and function is balance. So if at any point, one of this function gets destroyed, your ear gets destroyed in any way, you will lose not only your hearing, but your balance as well. Because your ear is functionality, not just hearing. But ear says, honey, don't limit me to one role. Give me more. You know, I am more important than that. Okay. Through the saccule comes out this duct. It's known as the ductus endolymphaticus. It ends in a bl blind pouch called the uh, saculus endolymphaticus. That's it. Um, utricle... Uh, joins with the ductus endolymphaticus via a duct called the um i just need to look at it ductus utriculosacularis all right so that is the duct that joins the two okay now let's talk about cochlea a little bit so if i try to take a cross section of the cochlea like that circular what will i see i will see within the cochlea i'll see on one side there will be the cochlear duct what is the cochlear duct it's a membranous labyrinth which means inside it what fluid lies it's going to be the uh, endolymph makes sense all right now there is running a membrane from the you can even call this cochlear duct a spiral lamina okay so from the spiral lamina or from the cochlear duct towards the bony part runs a membrane called the basilar membrane the basilar membrane separates the cochlea into the lumen of the cochlea into an upper part and a lower part the upper part is known as a scala vestibuli the lower part is known as scala tympani makes sense if i asked you what fluid were to flow in this what will you say guys you will say perilymph if you answered that correct you are getting the concept of inner ear and uh, now remember where uh, do you guys remember in the middle ear we had a boundary of um, a medial wall where we talked about two windows and honey if you don't know what that concept is then you better buy my head and neck course where i explain it to you uh, rather this is my head and neck see the course board i should give you a glimpse of all of that so this is when i taught the middle ear in my 
uh, board so you can see i told you about two windows this one window this one window and then two prominences this is just a fun way of part of my course two windows i told you was above was the oval window below was the round window my uh, main concept was that why is oval and round are the same thing honey imagine two names that are the same ann and ann one of them is like honey we have the same name we look the same let's just change up the scene you are ann uh, ann and man and i am and horse whatever <laughs> you guys get the basic concept where the scala vestibuli connects with the middle ear there is a prominence over there there is a window over there called the fenestra vestibuli and where the scala tympani connects to the middle ear there is a window over there called the round window or the fenestra cochlei so the uh, vestibuli is the oval whereas the cochlea is the round window okay so this and if someone asks you where is the organ of corti then it is located within this area what is this area it's the scala media or the inside the cochlear duct all right so you can see uh, these canals are also kept kept at right angles to each other just so that the best balance can be detected and you know what at the end of the day the vestibular cochlear nerve the vestibular part comes from here and the cochlear part of the nerve comes here and the eighth nerve is also Uh, formed over here so this was a basic concept of internal ear i really hope you understood well thank you so much for watching and you know subscribe to my channel for the best concept and definitely consider purchasing my course uh you can get in contact with me through instagram so thank you so much for watching guys yeah